Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, my Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. Uh, today's turn we're going to be looking at the replay for April 10th, 1942, and then we'll be looking at orders uh, for April 11th, 1942, the orders that we'll issue. Um, we can see here as we're getting started... Uh, we've got some submarine activity going on here in the Strait of uh, Mascar. So we've got uh, some depth charging going on. Go ahead and fast forward through that. No hits on that submarine. Uh, we've got the SS Finback firing torpedoes at a cargo ship off of Port Blair. So it looks like the Japanese are making a landing at Port Blair. You can see the Finback is firing torpedoes. It's also fired some deck guns. Whoa, that's a lot of fucking torpedoes. Oh my god. Um, did those all miss? Are those all missing? Really? Hit but no explosion. Good god. More torpedo misses. And it gets hit by a deck gun from the Japanese ship. Audio should be good now, uh, P. Warner. Another hit but no explosion. Oh my god. We're losing the deck gun battle. We fired off, I think, all of our torpedoes at this guy. Let me know if the audio is good now, guys. Upper works hit. <laughs> so many misses, and now we're just in a deck gun duel against a Japanese cargo ship. It would be nice if we had a 5-inch gun. A 3-inch gun feels a little tiny. Alright, so we withdraw due to low ammo. We inflict six casualties, disabling one Japanese infantry squad. We take two hits. We put eight shell hits into the Japanese cargo ship. And I think we fired, like, our entire complement of torpedoes. So that's a thing. All right, Japanese landing on the northern tip of Java. Interesting. So some patrol craft firing to suppress deck guns or uh, defensive guns. They're landing some troops north of Batavia to further cement their control over that uh, sector of the front. More landings here in the Philippines. 163 Japanese casualties at Baclode. He lost 11 infantry squads just landing. Wow. They must not have been prepared for that maneuver. JD Knights, thanks for the resub. Appreciate the support. Yeah, it's been it's been like three weeks since my last stream, so I know a lot of subs fell off. I do appreciate the continued support. Um, I would like to get back to being a little bit more normal, but for the moment anyway, that's a little bit difficult with a with a one month old. All right, so it says heavy damage on one of the patrol craft. Two cargo ships coming in, and they're landing troops at Port Blair. Looks like 20 Japanese casualties in the process of landing. One infantry squad destroyed, one non-combatant destroyed. And also remember, they also suffered one infantry squad disabled in the previous attack. So that would be two combat squads lost so far. Okay, we're still in the nighttime phase. Moving into the AM phase. We've got uh, our air recon will start. We just heard the sort of uh, SIGINT phase of uh, of the turn. More landing troops here in Batavia. Okay. Well, it's good to see you, Flying Scotsman fan. Sorry you couldn't stick around, but actually you may want to stick around a few minutes because I believe this gets very interesting. We did order some of our air units in uh, Rangoon to issue attack orders on the Japanese invasion fleet that we saw at Port Blair, so we'll see if those guys fly. Meanwhile, we've got a Dutch submarine here attacking a Japanese cargo ship and putting multiple torpedoes into the side of this Japanese cargo ship here. So uh, this is what it looks like when a submarine does its job. 
We've got the cargo ship Sydney Maru took one shell hit, two torpedo hits. Didn't say anything about infantry casualties, so I wonder if they got all their men off. I don't know how they would have gotten them unloaded so quickly, though, unless it was a very small unit. But you can see there that it does say the ship sunk, or at least we heard the, the water sloshing sound effect, which means the, the ship sank uh, after the battle. So that's one Japanese cargo ship down. We have not sunk very many Japanese cargo ships to this point in the game. We haven't sunk many Japanese ships, period. Uh, it's been a pretty um, bloodless uh, campaign at sea in terms of shipping losses, but... Uh, I don't think the, uh, it works that way, P. Warner. If they're not unloaded yet, they die. All right, we've got a fighter sweep over Batavia. Although I suppose other ships in the task force could pick them up. I think it does allow that to happen. All right, so PBY Catalina's coming in for a air attack on the Japanese shipping here at Blair. Unfortunately, they don't have any torpedoes at Rangoon. Um, or wherever they're based. I can't remember if they're based out of Rangoon. But you can see here, no um, no hits there. They were dropping from 2,000 feet with two 500-pound bombs, and they all missed. That's lame. I hope we get more attacks in there. Japanese bombing at Borneo. Catalina's attacking at Ambon. Oh, I forgot about that attack coming out of uh, Australia. Ooh, we put a 500-pound bomb into a Japanese troop transport, the AP uh, Kongamaru. And Japan does not have enough of these actual dedicated troop transports. So uh, one bomb hit heavy fires on the Japanese ship there. Looks like we're also attacking some shipping near Bola. These are all Catalinas out of uh, Australia, and they put some uh, uh, hits into a Japanese tanker. Ooh, that is golden. So you can see there, one bomb hit into a tanker. She's on fire. So some good Catalina strikes out toward Ambon and the adjacent base. Sally's bombing our troops at Batavia. More bombing of our troops north of Port Moresby. Bombing of our troops near Sabang in the north of Sumatra. Those guys are already defeated. They're just retreating. Some KI-30 ANs bombing our rear guard at Nanying. Bombing some of our troops at Batan. Okay. A lot of uh, small air attacks on different isolated elements of troops. Doesn't really mean a whole lot. These are, you know, these are mostly training missions for the Japanese. But quite a few of them. He flew quite a few sorties this turn. Meanwhile, seven Catalinas flying out toward Ambon, so we have a second strike coming in here against the Japanese at Ambon. And another Japanese cargo ship here. Do we get any hits there? It said no hits, but then it has 58 Japanese casualties. I don't know how that works. Six more Catalinas coming in, so the real air attack may not be at a uh, Port Blair this turn. It may be on the Japanese trying to pull their... They had a brigade of troops at Ambon. It may be the Japanese trying to pull that brigade of troops out of Ambon and get them out. It says Congo Maru, heavy fires, heavy damage, 60 more casualties. Didn't say any actual bomb hits, though. We have some medium bombers flying out of Batavia against the Japanese landing forces in the north of Java here. They're coming in, trying to bomb some Japanese shipping here, and we've got a successful skip bomb attack by a B-25 there. Put a 500-pound bomb into a Japanese car or troop ship. Four more Mitchells coming in here on the Shanghai Maru. No hits there, but we did put, we lost two aircraft, two damaged, one shot down. One bomb hit into the cargo ship Na Namu Maru on fire. I don't know that many of these casualties are going to be um, uh, super impactful. We also sent our hurricanes, rather than flying feudal cap missions, we sent them in on low-level uh, naval attack, thinking maybe they'd just be going up against uh, a Japanese patrol aircraft or shipping. I didn't think they'd be going up against actual warships, but uh, you can see these hurricanes, three of them attacked the Naka uh, light cruiser Naka, four shell hits, one bomb hit. So maybe some superficial damage there. We've also got our Warhawks and Falcons coming in on the same task force.
Um, the Falcons getting some bomb hits here on a Japanese troop transport. And you're right, the APs may not be dedicated. A lot of them were, were passenger liners that were carrying troops, but they're much more efficient at troop transports in this game than like converted merchantmen. So two bomb hits into the Shanghai Maru, as well as one into the Namu Maru. So our fighter aircraft coming in low, hitting these guys with low altitude bombs, uh, doing their job with those, those light bomb hits. We have not seen much success with our air attacks on Japanese shipping at all this game. So we're getting some good rolls here. We had some success with some B-17s on occasion, but generally speaking, we haven't had a lot of success. So this turn has gone very well for us. I don't know if we get any additional attacks here. All right, so we've got three Catalinas coming into Port Blair. I think these guys might be flying out of Sh or out of. Uh, um, I don't know where they're flying out. Of. I don't see the arrow. Maybe they're to the northwest. But a good strike there. Three Catalinas come in low. Put two bomb hits into the Mikasa Maru. Again, no report of actual Japanese troop losses here. So it's possible they already unloaded. But two bomb hits into this cargo ship. Heavy fires. Heavy damage. Six more Catalinas coming to Ambon. Man, this turn is is a lot of air attacks for us with, like, Catalinas. The, 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 and they're doing their work. Another bomb hit into another large AP. These are large passenger liners. They are valuable ships if you can sink them. One bomb hit into the Argentina Maru, and she's on fire. 193 Japanese casualties, two infantry squads destroyed, 21 disabled. This brigade's taking a lot of damage she lost i want to say 25 to 30 percent of her force attacking the fortification at ambon and now if she's losing you know these troops to air attack this is this is not going to be a brigade you're going to necessarily want to throw right into combat you're going to want to give them some time to rest all right so we've got our b-17s and other medium bombers going after the japanese tanks to the east of cyan and we destroyed or we damaged 33 of the enemy vehicles two destroyed 31 disabled that's a pretty good air attack there seven more catalinas coming in on the japanese troop transports here at ambon looks like a bomb hit into the Congo maru deck penetration another bomb hit into the Congo maru so three bomb hits into the Congo maru by this strike and then some machine gun strafing hits. A fourth bomb hit into the Congo Maru. A massive explosion, according to the combat report there. Four coming into this torpedo boat, uh, kind of like a, a small destroyer, almost like a DE. Multiple bomb hits. She may sink. She's not a very large ship. Yep, she did sink. So we sank the torpedo boat Hatakuri uh, with one shell hit and two bomb hits. And we put four bombs and one shell hit into the Congo Maru. Heavy fires, heavy damage. 389 Japanese casualty, casualties inflicted. 31 squads dis destroyed. Uh, those Japanese troops not having a good day. Another six Catalinas coming in, boys. On the burning Congo Maru, so she will probably go down, I imagine. Another 500-pound bomb into her. We're also going after the Kamuro Maru and a 500-pound bomb hit into her. These Japanese ships presumably are going to be laid up for a little bit. The Congo Maru sinks, and the Kamuro Maru is on fire. 333 more Japanese casualties, 18 infantry squads destroyed, 21 disabled, uh, three guns lost. So a good air attack here for the Allies in the Ambon region in the south, I guess the western Pacific. Another 14 Japanese ground vehicles destroyed in their armored fist, two, or sorry, two destroyed, 12 disabled, so that brings us up to 47 vehicles, potentially, although some of those could be like damaged twice, I guess, in theory. Some Blenheims hitting there as well, a little bit fragmented of an attack here. Not doing a lot of damage, but presumably slowing them down and costing a bit in the way of uh, disruption and fatigue. We did do some long-range Catalina strikes early on in the Malaya campaign, and we hit a cargo ship, and we might have even sunk one at Bangkok. They were actually flying with torpedoes out of there, and I know we put a torpedo into a couple of ships there, but they're just so vulnerable to Japanese combat air patrol that if there is any, they just get obliterated. They don't have, like, the heavy defensive values that the B-17s or B-24s do, so they don't survive very well in contested environments. But coming in on smallish task forces with limited flak and no no cap <laughs> they're basically playing into their uh 
into their wheelhouse right here. That or nighttime attacks, which are far less decisive, but can be can be important. All right, so I think that's it for the air attacks here. More troops unloading. Did they really unload everybody at Blair and like, well, it says they're unloading more there, but there was no report of casualties. So I'm really curious about that cargo ship that we sank with no casualties. Did we kill their supply? Or what, what was on that thing? Deliberate attack here to the south of Yan'an. Remember, we crossed the river, I think, was it last turn with a suicidal charge? So presumably they're going to drive us back here. No, they didn't. One-to-one -one odds. They win the battle, presumably. They lose 375 casualties in their attack, though. Two squads destroyed. We lose far more. But I'm okay with that. It, it causes the Japanese to expend more supply. Deliberate attack. And plus, if they do eventually wear us down so that on their next attack they actually destroy us, then we'll get those brigades back at Chongqing for free in like 60 days. Because of the way the Chinese um, respawn rules work. Okay, more bombardments near, near Quilin. Japanese lose three guns. Allies lose nothing. Japanese bombardment attack at Batavia, so they're continuing to try and bombard us there. The Dutch forces are surrounded. They lose a little bit worse, but the counter-battery from the Dutch is relatively effective. 26 Japanese casualties against 34 allied. Over attack here near Nanning. And uh, they drive us back through the mountains. Heavy Chinese casualties there. Another Japanese attack at Tijilap here. What did they attack with? It was like three... They they attacked with two infantry regiments and a naval guard unit against a coastal defense battalion and a base force. And the Allies still hold. They do have their forts reduced from one, from one to zero. But they inflict 95 casualties, mostly just disruption. But the Battle of Tijilap, those Dutch troops are really given a, given a good whirl there. Meanwhile, I thought that Sampit might be unoccupied, so I was trying to get these guys into Sampit so then they could be evacuated via um, air transport, but um, it doesn't look like it was un unoccupied, and so we lose casualties running into a, an enemy base force unit. They do come back without guns or heavy equipment, but at the end of the day, uh, Elka, um, they're either going to stay in place and die when the Japanese take Cyan and flank them, or we can have them die and reform in time to play a role in the next battle. So yes, they lose their heavy equipment, but they're too far isolated in their current position to survive, and so they would either be surrounded and destroyed without loss, or they can inflict casualties on the Japanese now, and then we can reform them later, um, and that's sort of the route I went. I would rather have something added to my defensive position to the west of Cyan than nothing when the Japanese win there. Which they almost certainly will. Okay. So we're into the reinforcement stage. Let's go ahead and fast forward through. Oh, shoot. One second, please. If you hit exit, it speeds up the replay, but it also... Okay. So. Uh, Yard Minesweeper, Southern YMS. So at Port Blair, it looks like the Japanese have... Three ships that are still moving northwest. I don't know where. Um, they apparently made it through our minefields without damage. I didn't see any report of enemy ships striking mines. Um, it does say they have two units in this base, 2,500 troops, nine guns. So it does look like they got the bulk of the unit ashore based on the way the replay unfolded. That could be a problem if they got like a whole naval guard unit ashore because that would be like 50 assault value and we only have 18 in defense. I did start to transfer the 1st Gloucestershire Battalion, which is a pretty decent British battalion um, in Rangoon via air. I started transferring them to Blair to try and reinforce. You can see here of those troops that were transferred, one British infantry section, two Bren sections, two Lewis anti-aircraft machine guns, two three-inch mortars, and two engineers. So we didn't get a whole lot of, uh, of troops there. That brings our assault value up to about 18 
Maybe we'll get it to 2021 after the next turn if we continue transferring troops in. There's a very real possibility that Blair will be lost. We did get one of our carriers in range here, although she didn't arrive in time to actually, like, fight anything. But we did get the Formidable, a British aircraft carrier which has 12 Albacore biplane torpedo bombers and 19 Martlet 2s, which are basically American F-4Fs. Um, and so next turn, we could definitely either try and finish off this Japanese naval task force or bomb the troops at Port Blair. The problem is bombing land troops in a jungle hex, which is what Blair is, when you own the base... You inflict way more casualties on a base when the enemy owns it than when you own it. For whatever reason, things like bombardments or air attacks do not work out very well against enemy troops in a hex they don't own. So we'll have to see. I don't know. There's a very good chance we will lose Port Blair, and that would suck. Um, but it is what it is, and uh, we're going to have to try and live with it. Um, with that being said, um, you know, we will try to see if we can wipe out that Japanese naval task force. If we take a look at the losses last turn, according to our reports here, um, we are we confirmed the Congo Maru sunk. The Sydney Maru number two was sunk near Port Blair by our submarine. And then the Japanese torpedo boat Hatsuki Maru. So a total of about 23 victory points lost by the Japanese in terms of their shipping last turn. Um, that was a pretty good turn for our air attacks. And in fact, a very good turn for our air attacks. We only lost one Catalina in the entire turn, and that was to ops losses. Um, five Allied planes lost four Japanese. Pretty light turn in terms of air combat. Uh, we did lose two pilots KIA, but again, I don't think any of those were fighter pilots. Um, and uh, that's where that's where you're at. Um, meanwhile, we do see the Japanese have gotten five units into Cyan. They have the, th I'm assuming the three units to the southeast of Cyan, these 5,000 troops are the three brigades that I already drove out of Cyan and ravished. We also can see that the 18 armored units here to the east are still, um, you know, two hexes away from Cyan. And so these five units could be overextended. I don't think they've brought any divisions or no new troops. So I think these five units are part of that force that took Nanning, Nanyang and whatever managed to get here, but didn't participate in the last fight. If it's five regiments and they're sitting at like 700 assault value, I like our odds. We have reinforced at Cyan and we have 3,900 assault value. We don't have a lot of supply in the base itself, but the troops in Cyan do have sufficient supply to attack without any penalties. They also have really good preparation points for pretty much all of the units are near 100. So that's really good. Um, their leaders are mixed. I have improved some of them, but some of them are not great. Uh, and uh, some of the units are really strong and some of them are a little bit beaten up and a little bit weak. In terms of the total force, that gives us about 64,000 infantry. The problem is, is, like, if these are brigades and they're sitting at, like, 170, then things get a little bit more dicey. You're talking about, you know, um, 850 assault value. Like, this could be effectively two divisions. 850 on the defensive versus the Chinese forces. Japanese may not, or the Japanese may shoot us to ribbons. Um, we do have some reinforcements on the way. So the third corps is on the way, which will bring another 200 assault value. Um, they'll arrive next turn, probably. Um, and then we also have the 43rd corps from the north, which is on the way with another 63. So we've got about 250 more assault value on the way to Cyan. My, my concern is this. If I wait a turn and bombard them, then there seems to me to be a good chance that the three brigades that we shot up a bit to the southeast will arrive to reinforce them. And while they were beaten up quite effectively, they're still going to be there to eat fire and to, to, to savage us. We have to win decisively at Cyan to justify an attack. If it's a close run thing, all we're going to do is make ourselves so weak that these Japanese armored troops, which are right, right, racing in from the east, will overrun us. If we do nothing, though, and we just wait, they're not going to overrun us. Even if these were five regular divisions, they're not going to overrun a level three fort at Cyan. But the problem is, once you combine a good amount of infantry with Japanese armor, then we're going to get rolled. Because you can beat Japanese armor if you attack it, if you are aggressive and counterattack them before they attack you. Chinese infantry can beat Japanese armor when the Chinese are the ones attacking the unsupported armor does not fare well in combat. However, if we're on the defensive against Japanese armor, our lack of anti-tank guns is going to come in real 
Um, it's going to hurt a lot and they will almost certainly overrun us. It is clear terrain. So they would likely batter us to, to bits there. Although we did get the fort up to level four fortifications. So that's good news. Still, if we can ravage five regiments or five brigades so that they've got eight really beat up infantry units, I actually think we might have a chance against a large amount of Japanese armor moving from the West. I'm not sure that that is true if we, well, I'm pretty sure, almost 100% sure that's true if we take bad casualties in the attack. So I'm not sure what the right approach is. I'll have to think about that, but it sure would be fun to have a counteroffensive against Japanese tanks, or sorry, a counteroffensive against Japanese infantry, ravage those infantry, and then potentially that would open up the opportunity to counterattack the armor and give them a bloody nose when they arrive. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, there's, you know, we could play it safe. We could bombard. I, the Japanese armor won't arrive in two days, I don't think. I think they're at least three days away since they haven't gotten to this hex yet. Um, I could be wrong. They could be two days away if they really speed west because it is clear and the terrain is clear. Yeah, I, I suppose they could make it. The only way to be for sure that the armor won't be there is if we attack now. But again, we could be charging into bayonets. So there's that. I am going to start flying in the... Um, not these guys. The... 56 anti-tank regiment with its 37 millimeter anti-tank guns. There's 36 of them. We are going to start flying them in. My thought process would be to fly them into Klinko and then they can move into the mountains here to help the defense once Cyan's breach. I did just think we could theoretically fly them into Cyan um, and then just get them right onto the front line with their anti-tank guns. Um, but in the clear terrain, I don't know that I like that strategy. So I'll have to think about that. I, I my, the aggressive side of me says the previous attack against the three fresh brigades or regiments or whatever it was went really well. Even if that enemy force was double, they still would have had strong odds against them with the die rolls. My gut says go with a deliberate attack before the enemy armor can get there. I do think there's a risk we consume too much supply that hurts our ability to defend. There's a chance we lose, you know, 1500 assault value and cripple our own force. But you know, it's now or never. It feels like, you know, playing a passive game in this situation is not going to fare well for us. So, yeah, we'll have to think about that. Meanwhile, no real change in the Japanese position in the south of China. They don't seem to be moving too aggressively. Our troops at Chingikang um, are at level five fortifications now um, with also really good defensive terrain. They're in uh, rough terrain, so they get a times two for the terrain plus times five for the forts. These guys ain't going anywhere. Um, 3,600 assault value. I've slowly pulled a little bit of that away because if the Japanese cross the river, they're attacking a level five fort because they're forced to shock attack if they cross the river. So like even if they move five divisions across, they would probably get absolutely savaged because of those modifiers. Even the troops to the northeast here, which are not in a base hex, have uh, level three forts in a similarly well-defended position um, with, I think, less assault value. I think we're down to 2,200. I may want to strip troops from Qingkaiing rather than here because the, the fort the fort level's better. But even so, I think that would preclude an attack. We don't have any intelligence the Japanese are going to launch an attack. There doesn't seem to be any indication. Their two main efforts seem to be at Quilin, where they definitely don't have enough troops to break through here. We've got level three forts, uh, and our bombardments are telling us that the Japanese might have a slight AV advantage, but not enough to break through. Um, and so that's good news um, with our almost 3,000 assault value here. Actually, I think our reinforcements arrived. We had three more cores arrive recently. Where's the other part of the 71st core? Oh, way up there. Well, I would like to get them down there so I can reform that core. Um, meanwhile, in Burma, we do see these two units. Our intelligence says there's 35,000 troops. So I'm guessing this is two Japanese infantry divisions moving west out of Chiang Mai. We have started the process of moving our troops, the 7th Australian Division, the 18th British Division, and the 1st Burma Division to the northeast to block their position. They only made about 13 miles this turn. The Japanese are crossing a river and a mountain range, so I'm hopeful that they can't get there in time. We could launch some bombing attacks to try and slow them down, but I'm hopeful that the Japanese are going to take at least two more turns to make it here, and if they do, then we should be able to defend them behind a river in good defensive terrain, jungle terrain. Um, and maybe maybe give them a bloody nose. Again, if we can arrive in time, we'll see. 
Um, if we can't arrive in time, then we're going to be in a bit of a dicey position where the Japanese could potentially flank Rangoon and Mol- and Pegu moving through to the north and then driving north toward Mandalay. Um, but we'll have to see what happens there. Could we move around the Japanese at Quilin and cut their supply? Probably not easily. So we do have one portion of a core to the southwest of Quilin. There's a, a road we can move to the east, but the Japanese supply is coming along this railroad line from Hanyang. And we'd have to move. Uh, yeah, there really isn't. So the only way to get around here would be through no road hex, no supply hex. It would be very, very slow and they would see us coming because we'd have to get here and then move here. That would be two very delayed turns. We could try and move from here to here to cut their supplies. Um, that would also be a very extended period of time. It would take a lot of effort. They would probably see us coming. Maybe if we started from up here and just tried to cross this way, but our own troops would have no supply. Uh, and they'd probably just move these troops east one hex and crush us before the supply situation became critical. It's not eight, It's not 2,000 troops. It's like 60,000. So, Plus, they could always rail troops in from the east. I don't know. It's something worth thinking about, I guess. Um... Meanwhile, our carriers are to the northwest now of uh, Sumatra. So they're on their way to Colombo to, to, or sorry, on their way to, yeah, Colombo to re rearm. But the American fleet carriers are in this vicinity. It doesn't look like the Japanese actually sent any carriers to Port Blair to support their attack there. Um, we got some intelligence this turn that the CVLs and CVEs of the Mini Kitty Butai are still at Singapore, so they're at least two days away at, at modest speeds, probably three days away from getting there, getting close in. So that does mean our carriers have a little bit more time if we were worried there was going to be an Indian Ocean raid. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's something we should be worried about or not. I don't know where these guys are going, but it looks like they might be sending a division or some reinforcements to Molmon as well. Um, Meanwhile, down at Ambon here, we can see we hit these enemy ships hard with air power um, that we're trying to leave. It does still say they've got about 5,400 troops and two units at Ambon itself. Um, not sure what we destroyed in the water. Uh, we also destroyed some troops near Bola here, or we actually hit a tanker near Bola. Uh, so that was a nice little attack. Our, or our, our Hudson, or sorry, Catalina's out of Darwin did a good job. Unfortunately, there's no headquarter there, I don't think, to give them tor... I don't think there's an air headquarter. Yeah, there's no air headquarter, so we can't arm them with torpedoes, which would be bloody nice. But even so, these these, these boys, they did, a, they did a good work. So you can go th through here, and we can take a look at the, the crews here and see who gained some experience. Naval bombing for WF Rhodey there. He's up to 64. They've gotten pretty good naval bombing skill traits, except for this group. Uh, PBY, uh, Catalina Group, VP42. These guys are in the 20s, but at least one guy's up to 27. You can see some of them flew as well. Some ASW work for some Hudsons here, some Whirlaways um, and whatnot. And then we also had the air attacks flying out of Batavia against the Japanese shipping to the northeast there. It looks like they only landed one unit and 160 men, so not very many troops. They also have moved one unit down to Oosthaven, uh, where all that oil was. But uh, they use some APDs and some light transport ships here at Batavia. Um, 160 troops ashore, that probably is enough to overwhelm 15 infantry. But it's uh, it's not like they brought a lot of troops there. Meanwhile, the troops at Tijalab continue to hold out. They're being battered down a bit. You can see the coastal gun battalions, militia squads, almost half of them are disabled. The rifle squads in the base force, almost half of them are disabled. Um, and the Japanese have reduced the forts at Tijalap to zero forts. Although, with the engineers there, they're at 60%, so there's a chance they could get to level one forts, maybe? Although, does that not actually calculate to the end of the turn? Well, if the Japanese don't continue their attack this turn, we might be able to hold for a little bit longer. Um... But yeah, those are the main things for this particular turn. We continue to try and pull Indian troops that were pushed out of Moresby back to Australia via troop transports and Catalinas and flying boats and whatever. So you can see here the 45th Brigade, we got a big chunk of it out. We got about 40% of their total infantry strength, and some of that had already been destroyed in the battle. So we got about 43 infantry squads out. Most of their heavy equipment you couldn't transport 
But we did get three mortars out. Um, we got one Bren section out. The Vickers, I don't think we could transport in the air. Um, no combat engineers. No engineers. Some of the support. And none of the motorized support because that can't be transferred. But still, a nice little brigade there to uh, rest and, you know, give them some R&R &R in India. Or not in, the, in India, in Australia. And actually, we potentially could disband the unit, I think. Um, and then get those squads back and transfer them to the, uh, to the Indian, uh, front or the Burma front. So that might be a nice thing. I'm going to strategic move these guys though. I want to get them somewhere where they can rest somewhere away from the front where they can just take a bath and supplies to get up, get back up to speed. So we're going to go ahead and strategic move them via rail, and then we'll go ahead and set their objective to Sydney, uh, because there's so much supply there that'll make them recover much more quickly. Uh, meanwhile, the other brigade, the 44th brigade, we've begun moving in this turn, I believe it was, and they're up to five infantry sections. So five infantry squads and 15 support. Um, those are 1942 sections. Those are very valuable. Uh, you can see here there are five more sections left behind. Um, is that really all that's left? Five more infantry sections left behind as well as 15 support. The support doesn't matter all that much, but 30 more infantry uh, that's five infantry squads, so we could get up to ten of that brigade out. That's only a, that's a that's a fraction of the force that would be able to survive. Uh, and then after that turn, we could try and get some of the support out for the fifteenth RAF base force unit, but um, that doesn't matter. They've been pounding these guys with air powers. So they've been whittling away. Is it possible to build Horn Island up? Uh, possible, yes. Easy, no. We did reinforce it, so we did send the fifth. Royal Australian Artillery, Coastal Artillery Regiment, I believe. Um, we didn't get all of it in there. Some of it didn't unload or whatever, but we've got eight six-inch coastal guns that we have unloaded there, as well as 18 AIF infantry sections. So that'll make them better at defending uh, against a Japanese landing there. The six coastal guns could do some pretty heavy work against... If the Japanese make the mistake of sending a light task force like an APD heavy task force or just a couple of APs or fast transport, those guns could really wreak, wreak havoc. And then we also have the, the sort of local defenders who would start there with another nine infantry squads. Uh, the Taurus Strait Battalion, which has 16 uh, AIF 1942 infantry squads. And then we also have the Horn Island uh, engineer unit here. Uh, which has five more. So we've got good quality infantry here and almost a, a guard unit worth of assault value on the defensive. The problem there is the supply situation is very bad. We probably could use air transport to get it up, though. And it's at level two, a uh, level two fort already. It's an atoll also, which I think makes bombardments less effective, but I'm not sure. So... But I need to get more supply in there. We had been flying some Catalinas and some uh, other float planes out of there, but I need to get the supply up there a bit more. Meanwhile, we do have troops, or sorry, we've got um, cargo flowing into Rangoon. A couple more task forces arrive this turn, so we now have about, what, 43, almost 55,000, just shy of 55,000 supplies on ships in Rangoon's port, as well as 80,000 in the facility itself. So that does help feed China, which is important to keep that Burma road open when we're launching air attacks out of China with 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 very hungry uh, bomber formations that consume a lot of supplies. By the way, these guys can probably hit Cyan now. They were out of range of everything before, but I think they can bomb Cyan. Yes, they can. Uh, Cyan is a level five, so it's in normal radius. It is flying out of a level one airport, so I think they only bomb at uh, extended range loadouts. So that'll be 300 kilogram bombs instead of six. But still, that's a further 23 bombers here. That'll, or not 23 bombers. That's a further 22 bombers that could launch attacks on these Japanese troops ahead of our actual attack. Or we could bomb the troops trying to come up and maybe slow them down a bit. We can't reach the tanks there. We could also shift our B-17s to try and focus on Cyan if we're going to attack there this turn. I don't know that I want to stop hitting the armor, though. I want to keep trying forcing them into combat formation. I don't want to let them stick and move and move rapidly. Our bomber formation is actually in pretty good shape flying out of Chongqing. You can see the fatigue level. There's only a handful of bombers that are out of action. They haven't really seen much in the way of Japanese fighters or flak. 
which is uh, actually none, which has uh, really cut down on any operational damage to the aircraft. One of the groups, the 5th Bomber Group, 23rd Bomber Squadron, is largely combat ineffective, but the other guys are all doing fine. Um, and then we do have some aircraft at Cyan itself. They're consuming some of the limited and very valuable supply. We should probably transfer these guys back to uh, Kinko, get those tactical bombers out of there. But then we've got three Hurricane Squadrons and a Warhawk Squadron, as well as a uh, Flying Tiger P-40 Squadron all sitting at Cyan. But the problem is when you set them up on like cap and stuff like that, they do take, um, they, they consume supply and there's only 600 supply here. So we're going to need that. So we'll have to see how best to approach that. Um, but yeah, that's the situation right now, guys. Um, we do have some cargo ships, additional uh, supplies on the way to Rangoon. 7,000 there, which may have to be diverted if Blair falls. Um, we've got a brigade here on the way to Rangoon, the 23rd Brigade. We could divert them to Blair, but I don't think they'd arrive in time anyway. And also, they're... Task Force is 38,000 tons. They are set to amphibious, though, so they could unload over the beach. Um, so we could send that brigade to Blair. Uh, the problem is I don't think they're not prepared for Blair, so they wouldn't really be able to effectively counterattack the Japanese if the base falls. Um, they'd lose a lot of casualties, and the Japanese would have air power from the Malay Peninsula dominance if they won it. That brigade is probably more valuable in Rangoon. Um, 20,000 supplies here. I thought we had another task force with another brigade on it. Another one back here. Two brigade, or a, a re recon unit, RAF base force unit, and the 14th brigade all coming here. Much further back. And then the third brigade, because there were three. May already be on the map. That may be closer. Not sure. Where are they? I don't know where they are. I don't know. Do you know the airspeed velocity? No. No, Captain. Um... Yeah, the concern, I guess what we're going to see, Sean Mack, is there is a chance Blair falls this turn. And if Blair falls this turn, that's going to throw a wrench into some of our plans. Um, if Blair hangs on this turn, then she will probably hold. It's all going to come down to what that initial Japanese attack uh, does. So the Japanese are going to attack this turn um, off the ships. And uh, generally the way amphibious assaults go in this game is if the initial attack succeeds then you can take the base right away or you already can see the odds are going to allow you to take it in the next turn after. Like sometimes they take two or three days to whittle the forts down. But if they reduce the fort level by one this turn, they will almost certainly take the base unless we destroyed their supply, in which case maybe it'll take longer. Um, but if they attack and they don't succeed and they get like one to two odds and they fail to reduce the forts, then we'll probably hold. It might be a combat. No, I think. Did you say it was a naval guard unit that we saw? Because I thought there was intelligence saying there was an engineer unit on the way, which would allow them to reduce forts more effectively, but... SIGINT reports... Nah. Stuff. They might have this to force a more decisive battle, I suppose. Can you reform the 4th Marines? Like, were they destroyed? Ground unit destroyed. Why is that not let me filter by assault value? I don't see the fourth Marines on here. I don't have the fourth Marines as destroyed. 82nd Naval A1. So maybe it was only a fraction of a Naval Guard unit, in which case they may not have enough troops ashore to succeed. 
I mean, I, my thought was it could also be an attempt to lure us out for a major car- carrier battle, which was the logic behind putting the formidable out here as, as bait. But um, so far, no indication by any recon or other submarines that there's a larger force sitting in wait. We've got a nice submarine screen as well as some Catalinas flying over the Strait of Malacca. We got intelligence. The CVs are still back at Singapore. They could be waiting for the Kitty Butai to arrive. But why would you launch your amphibious attack out ahead of that then? I don't know. Fourth Marines are in the Philippines. Well, I can't reform them if they're still here. Uh, first Marines. I don't even see a fourth Marine unit there. Oh, that's because I'm not showing. Fourth Marine Regiment. They're still here. They're at 94 assault value. They're one of our best units, and they're still combat effective at, at uh, Clark Field, although their supply situation is not great. But uh, for the moment, no no point in reforming them. They'll starve out, though, in the coming days. Fear not. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, that's probably going to do it for this stream. I don't think I've got a lot else to show you. We went through the shipping stuff last turn. Not a lot of air attacks. Uh, next turn could be really interesting. Um, first off, I am thrilled with how our Catalinas flew out of Darwin. This was one of the most active turns we've had so far in the game in terms of air attacks and actually striking home against Japanese shipping, sinking multiple Japanese ships um, with air power. Good stuff. Um, that. Well, by the way, what happened to the Finback? Is she still here? Uh, the Finback. Here you are. This guy sucked. He fired his entire torpedo complement. Every one of his torpedoes was launched, and they all missed that one Japanese cargo ship. Can you imagine if the Finback had sunk that enemy cargo ship with its troops on board, that entire Naval Guard unit would be gone, and then the survivors that may have been picked up by the other cargo ship probably would have been killed by the Dutch submarine, which sank a different merchant ship, and so they might have lost their entire force to two submarines. Instead, the Finback sucks. Lieutenant Commander J.W. Cole... He's got good naval traits, 71. He's aggressive at 62. Pretty decent leader at 64. You know, he did his job. He kept pressing the attack. But uh, he even used up all his three-inch deck gun ammo almost. He just didn't do very well. That's true to a point, x So, like... The vast majority of those torpedoes were misses. I think I saw three duds out of the entire attack. But the way that this works, we had three, six, nine, twelve. I think we might have had 15 torpedo attacks. It was definitely more than 10. It might have been 11 or 12. And so I think three of them may have been duds. But if the other eight were just flat out misses, that's not a great hit percentage. Like, bad aim. Maybe it ran deep. But we might need to kill haul this captain as an example to the other the other captains. Might be something we need to do. But that'll be for another time. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. Sorry this is going to be a short stream, but uh, it's my first stream in three weeks. And I've got a baby sitting literally a foot to the left of my monitor. Um, so I need to wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Try to make this more frequent. I'm going to try and figure out a stream schedule that works so I can get back into the flow of things. But to the to the folks who stuck around, who continue to come out, appreciate the support. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your week and weekend coming up here. And uh, as always, until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'm out. <laughs>